What is up guys, it's your boy Swallam here, back with another Dragonflight preparation video. So now that I've returned to making some retail videos again, I've gotten this one question a lot of times, so now we're answering this one question in this one video. So this video will be all centered around BOE farming in Dragonflight, and that is the question that I've been getting, like are we going to be able to farm BOEs in the open world the same way in Dragonflight that we have been doing in Shadowlands, and like at the launch of Shadowlands and BFA, and the previous expansions we have farm the BOEs in the open world, usually in like a 2 times 4 type of group format, where you can farm as up to 8 people in 2 groups of 4. So this video will be all centered on that topic, we're doing some research on BOEs in Dragonflight and looking at what we have so far. This is obviously kind of early info still, we are about 2.5 weeks, maybe 3 weeks away from the launch still, depending on when I get this video up, but we're like 2.5 to 3 weeks away from Dragonflight world launching, so a lot can change from now until then, but at least we can look at what we have so far and we can make up our minds and get some speculation out of the way. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below after watching this video, but with that being said, let's get into it. So the type of farm that I mean when I say 2 times 4 farming is, for example, the one you can see on the screen right now, which is an example of a 2 times 4 farm we found in Shadowlands, where we're farming for both cloth and different stuff in the open world, as well as getting the chance of world drop epics. So to do this, you want to have as many druids as possible. You're basically pulling and killing mobs towards a monk statue in the middle. And when we're talking about world drop BOE epics, this is what we mean, so farming in a group, getting as many kills as possible, if it has like, let's say it has a 1 in a 1000 drop chance, you want to kill a 1000 mobs as soon as possible. Typically it has a way lower drop chance though. Okay, so with that being said, we have done some research, we have tried to find some BOEs in Dragonflight so far. I will tell you that I've leveled two characters to level 70 on the Dragonflight beta. One of them was mostly by questing, actually only by questing. The second one was like a combination of questing and also gathering stuff. And I haven't found a BOE epic, and also by whispering people, or asking people in chat and so on. I haven't found a single person that has found a world drop BOE epic while leveling up in Dragonflight, but we have done some research. We know that the epics are very low drop chance, and some of them might not even be in the game just yet, because as, uh, as usual, Blizzard just uh, waits with this, because this is not really super important, so they're waiting and just throwing that in there last second. But we have found some, uh, some BOEs though that are actually worth looking at, so for example right here, these are some of the first uh, world drop type of BOE epics that I've uh, found so far, and um, we're going to be talking a little, about, a little bit about this, so I made a document called Possible World Drop BOE Epics, or World Drop Epics. So we have four epics right here. All of them have the same item level, they all look roughly the same, or the, the, they have the same item level, they have some of the stats, they have two to three stats, and they have a pr pr prismatic socket stat as well. Now one of them, the ring for example, is a 395 item level, which could come in important here by the way. The other ones are 389 item level. It's also worth noting that by looking at the actual uh, like what the um, logo looks like for both the Frozen Claw Mantle and the Great Hamel for Horn Fury, they're looking a lot like the tier items for both uh, I think it's Death Knights and also Drak Theory. So it's worth noting they look very similar to tier items, which can indicate that they can come from the raids, which we'll take a look at in just a second, but we have some more epics to look at. Again, one of them will be more important than the other ones, so here we go. Here we have an additional 6 BOE items, 5 of them have 389 item level. Now this time around, instead of having 3 stats and 1 socket, they have 2 stats and 2 sockets. Now obviously the sockets could be placeholder, maybe they don't have sockets, or who, who really knows, they could be placeholders. But as for now, they have 389 item level, 2 main stats, 2 secondary stats, and 2 prismatic sockets. That being said though, we found a last one as well called the Bloody War Boots of Impunity. So these ones are 350 item level, which might seem kind of low for an epic, and I do agree, but it's a different item level than the other ones have been so far. Now here's where this gets interesting, well maybe not interesting for BOE are farming in the open world, but we have some words from Blizzard on actual BOE farming, but inside raids, so let's check that out. 
Okay, so if we read out this blue post right here, we have some words from Blizzard regarding bound on equip items. So regular non-boss enemies within raids will no longer have a chance to drop a bind on equip items. Instead, lieutenant enemies named mini bosses throughout the raid will have chances to drop them instead. These would work like for example lieutenants doing current WoW where you're only eligible to receive loot from them once per week per difficulty. So BOE farming inside the raids will be way different this time around instead of actually making a farming group you will have to do the raid itself now these lieutenants will be placed between bosses maybe you will have like one or two before the first boss so you might still be able to somewhat farm them but they have a actual lockout so once you kill them once you have to go to the next difficulty kill them again and do this on all the difficulties now this makes it way more difficult to actually farm boe items and this time around mythic boe items will be a lot more in demand and if you get like a really good one from mythic difficulty it can sell for literally millions of gold especially like at the beginning when you have those early rushes especially when the big guilds are paying the big golds if you have like these lieutenants can apparently drop weapons as well so if you get a very good mythic weapon you're in for some serious payday boes would become scaled with group size array like regular mob, uh, mob bosses do this would guarantee a set number of boes each raid per group assuming a fully clear of the instance lastly we'll be placing more important items into the BOE pool. This could be anything from weapons to higher item level pieces to make them more worthwhile to raiders. So if you're an actual raider now and doing heroic or mythic raiding, you can make a lot of side uh, pass somewhat passive income just from raiding, just by getting lucky on those lieutenant drops and getting the right items and selling them for the right price. So BOE farming inside raids will be way different and this will this is important for the BOEs we've found so far because if I scroll up in this post we can see the item levels from bosses and from raids so 389 is the base item level from normal difficulty and will drop from Eranog, Primal Council, Senarth and Terrors. 395 is the new intermediate tier which was previously final bosses and that exists now for wing bosses for example the last bosses of every single wing so yeah we have those two item levels and if we go back to pulling up the, the actual charts we have so far this one for example we have three items that are 389 item level. Two of them also have the logos of raid items. So the Great Helm of Horn Fury and the Frozen Claw Mantle. I would be very surprised if they drop from the open world inside of inside the raid. So these are looking like raid items and maybe the Ser Lava Monster Ceremonial Waste Guard is the same and Emissary's Flame Wrought Seal as well. It's uh, the, the tier 2 right so 395 which we can see once again right here. It's the secondary item and they did say if we scroll down right here they would place a lot of these uh, in, into a uh, where was it? Here we go. We were placing more important items into the BOE pool, uh, anything from weapons to higher item level pieces. So we already have one higher item level piece that is data mined so far, that is a BOE. That being said though, on this picture for example, we have a lot more items. Some of them don't have the logos that I would think they have, and we have a lot of wrist items, chest items, legs, feet. It's the same stuff, so chest, wrist, legs and feet. If you go back to this one, we have head, shoulder, wrist ring and waist. That's a lot of different types of BOE uh, stuff to fill out and I would not assume that there was going to be BOEs for every single item slot inside the raid so maybe some of these are actually drops from the open world as well. If we go back to Shadowlands for example World Drops had 190 item level, the raid had 200 item level, so it would make sense for open world items to have slightly lower item level, but if we go back to a different type of expansion, then open world BOEs have sometimes had the same item level as the first raid just to make it actually worth farming. So yeah. Now one more thing that I personally think is worth exploring is the war, bloody war boot of impunity. The ones at the bottom of the screen right about the here, uh, that way. That way, there we go. That way, so the, the, those have 350 item level. Obviously not dropping from a raid because they're way down in the item levels from the raid. So these could potentially be crafted. But having said that, if you open blacksmithing right now, for example, if you go to professions, blacksmithing right here, we can filter our search to also show the unlearned ones. And if I search up for bloody, for example, nothing is going to show up. There are no results with the current filters. And if I just search for blood, we only have old expansion 
Mountain stuff, so Dark Iron Gauntlet, and anything that requires a Blood of the Mountain. So there's no new crafts coming this time around with, with that name, so yeah, you can't find them down here. That being said, it has 350 item level. You can craft 343 item level blues with, uh, well, very low amount of ingredients, so these ones right here could be selling for a couple thousand gold. So if you have a World Drop Epic item at 350 item level, I wouldn't assume that one is going to be massively expensive. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. I do think a group farming will be a thing even if we don't have epics, but I, I would hope we have epics because it just makes farming a little bit more fun, even though we are farming a lot of gold as well by doing the usual farms, especially now that we have volatiles, or basically volatiles, the awakened elements that are right here. We have those backs, we can farm for awakened frost, awakened decay, awakened fire, awakened um, order, we can farm for all of these uh, eternals or elementals, and make a lot of gold that way. We also have some 2x4 cloth farms as well that we found on the beta and if you want to see all the farms that I've personally found on the beta and I've found over 40 different gold farms in the Dragonflight beta they are all in my Dragonflight gold guide that you can check out through the link down below and the TLDR here is that I personally think 2x4 farms are going to be massive in Dragonflight there's so many good gold farming opportunities out there but having world drop epics would make them better but the ones I have data mined so far I don't think are world drop epics so hopefully, hopefully Blizzard just adds some of them into the, the mix as well. Hopefully you enjoyed the video though, just a quick TLDR on the information that we have for world drop epic farming or BOE farming in general. So far they have massively overtuned the or they have changed how you make how you get them from raids. So instead of actually farming them inside raids now, you're just getting them from mini bosses throughout the raid. So if you want to raid and make gold, well there you go. Very good way to make some extra gold while doing your usual raiding activities. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video if you did leave a like down below and subscribe for more dragonflight content we have a bunch planned we have dry uh, profession review series we have a launch plan series preparation videos we have a lot of dragonflight videos to help you make as much gold as possible in dragonflight so yeah subscribe for those leave a comment down below leave a like on the video hopefully you enjoyed thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again very soon